These three interior designers have been given a photograph of an empty foyer. They have free reign to design it in any way they please. My name is Mandy, and when I design a foyer, I really like to think about my favorite elements, which are organic touches and vintage materials. I'm Nas, and when it comes to designing an entryway, or a foyer, or a foyer, I love thinking about energy and big moments. I'm Eric, and when designing an entry space, my style is to create something that feels like a warm hug as soon as you're walking into the space. No clients, no restrictions, just blank space. So this original room is sad, and it just feels a little confused. This little closet door here is a little stumpy, but then it has a really big forehead. There's not much life to it. Like The setting looks like there might be something beautiful outside because I see all the natural light trying to come in, but it's being blocked by that giant door that's really not doing anything. This is so cold. The space feels like austere, it doesn't feel friendly. It, like it's kind of haunted, like it's, is this haunted? Like we're haunted, right? With this door, I'd like to essentially keep it the same size, but I wanna change out all the materials so we can keep the opening and just throw in a new door. I'd like for it to be wood. So something kind of like this, where it has a lot of texture to it, it feels rustic, it just kind of feels like you're bringing the outdoors in. I think there's so much to work with here, but it's not where it needs to be. Things that I love about it, these two side lights are amazing. Side lights are basically non-moving windows that go on either side of a threshold, a threshold being a door. And then this Claire Story window over top that's so beautiful. But other than that, this is kind of a boring pants, right? Also, you've got fogged glass here, so you can't see anyone. You can't figure out who's coming to your front door. Is it an Amazon delivery or a person who's gonna steal your packages? I don't know. We need to get glass in the door. So for the entry door, I am thinking of really figuring out a way to really let that light come through so that the space feels larger and bigger. And you could also experience the outdoors while you're sitting inside or walking past. I believe maybe by introducing some glass, maybe turning that into steel frame doors with the molding, I definitely wanna make sure that the molding stays because there's something very classic and traditional about it. But I think adding the steel frame doors are gonna make it feel a little bit more contemporary. I am gonna do just stationed glass panels on the side. So the only two doors that will open will be the French steel doors. I'm really feeling like playing with curvature and semicircles and arches in this space. I love the high ceilings, but it's too many lines. It's too much rectangular energies. What if we did an entire arched everything for the front door? So we've got an arch front door, but then we even have an arched set of windows around it. I've personally never seen anybody do that before, so we're gonna try it here. I would like to do kind of like a herringbone formation up here just to add a little bit more visual interest. This is a really small room and I really love texture and layers. So this kind of just adds like a layered element to otherwise plain glass and just kind of makes this whole small space feel artistic. I recently worked on a project where the whole theme was underwater and I love the idea of imagining like what if this room were also a part of that house? Like what if it was like a mermaid and she's opening a bed and breakfast and this is the entryway? I love the idea of the stained glass almost feeling like the surface of dappled water and the way that the pieces come together feels almost the way that it looks when you're underwater and looking up to the surface of the water when daylight is shining through it. So it looks like there's some kind of like sad, I'm just gonna keep saying sad, a sad plaster finish on here that plaster is very beautiful, but this coloring with the flooring doesn't really work well for me. So I'd like to replace it with this warmer color. This is a Portola paint, Roman clay. The color is Yosemite. And just adding it to this wood, you can see how it immediately like warms everything up and makes it feel cozy. 
So looking at the walls right now in the original room, they just feel like there's no life in them. So what I want to propose is doing a wallpaper that has a beautiful landscape that is going to bring the outdoors indoor so that when you're standing inside and looking out, it almost feels like you're outside looking in. If you wanted to take it to the next level, you could always commission an artist to come do a beautiful mural and really just bring that whole space to life. The original space has a door to the left. I don't know where it goes, but it's a real door. We're gonna turn that into an arch doorway. But I also like secrets. You know, like Victorian houses that are converted into bed and breakfast. A lot of them have all kinds of different stairwells or secret doors. I'm gonna add a symmetrical extra faux door on the right-hand side of the entry, just so that it feels when you walk in like there's more space than there really is. It gives you the illusion that the house continues but it's not real. So this door is really interesting. It's tall and it draws your eye up to the ceiling, but then once you get to the ceiling, there's nothing very interesting about it. So I would love to do a coffered ceiling and trim it out with wood, and then the wood will be the same texture as the door, just to give you a little bit more visual interest and also give you an opportunity for a statement piece of lighting. The ceiling is also very angular in the before space, so what I wanna do is create coved ceiling lines up at the top. That way everything in the space is more curvy. What is going on with the walls in this space? I'm not sure. It looks like somebody's DIY plaster job. Oh gosh, I work with this incredible decorative artist in San Francisco named Caroline Lizarraga. And one of the things that we've collaborated on a couple of times is her resin drip. It's so beautiful. Basically she mixes literal solid gold into resin and it's which resin is you know like a goopy liquid plaster that sets and we drip it down the wall which is ridiculous it's like kind of ludicrous i love the idea of doing that in some kind of a gold for the flooring i wasn't a fan of the mahogany red wood that was there and i love concrete floors especially when they're polished there's something very earthy and i love walking barefoot on concrete so for me the foyer was a place where i really wanted to bring that in so that when you're walking into the space you connect with it right away concrete is a great great material to use in foyers because if you're in a place where it rains a lot or it snows or it gets warm it really adapts to all climates so it's easy to clean if it's hot outside usually they keep cool so when you walk in, the space feels a little bit colder. So it really just adapts to any setting. I'm not a big fan of these floors because I feel like this wood tone doesn't really make sense with the way that the rest of the foyer is currently designed. So to kind of tie in with the new wood door that I'm going to install in the door here and then the coffered ceiling up top, I would love to do a nice wide plank, white oak flooring with a lot of texture on it so that when you walk in, it's immediately like, wow, it's an artistic room. As much as I love a wood floor, I'm gonna be really honest with you. This is a bed and breakfast. This is a very high traffic entry where tons of different people are coming in and out of this doorway. So I don't think that hardwood would hold up in a real bed and breakfast. So let's get practical for a moment. Stone floors is a very, very durable and frankly, really beautiful way to cover an entryway and doing like what looks like an organic, almost like giant slab terrazzo stone floor, but it's actually deliberate cuts that exactly replicate a bigger version of the stained glass. And we're gonna mix Carrera marble and we're gonna mix Amazonite. So this is my little fake miniature rug. And again, with the idea of bringing the outside in, having this little element of green will just kind of add to the coziness of the space. That particular rug is from Empire Collection and I love that it's striped. I love that it looks plush and cozy, but still like not a shag rug. So I just want to put a piece of furniture in here that makes a lot of sense for what you would do here. It's a place for you to be able to put a holiday display at different times of year or florals all year long or books or like a welcome note. So I want there to be a table. I am obsessed with this Wendell Castle table. And what I really like about this one is it's organic. There's literally a hole in it, which is just kind of wild. I don't know, the shape of this table feels literally like it could be a piece of coral that came out of the ocean. So in the original space, there isn't much furniture 
nature and I wanted to keep that still very minimal, but just with the right pieces that had intention behind them. I, being Mexican, I love antique benches that are sourced from either old churches or monasteries and I just find it very welcoming to be able to sit and just either put your shoes on or have a conversation before someone leaves the house. So for the bench on the right, it's for functional reasons. So we are a no-shoes house, so I just assume that everybody is a no-shoes house. So it's a place for people to come in and put their shoes on or take them off. And the bench itself, I reupholstered it in this runner that is by Block Shop Textiles, again with strong patterns and lines to kind of continue with the idea of these lines and patterns that are in the stained glass and in the rug. And another reason why I want there to be a table in the middle of the foyer is once in a while, I'm really about feng shui. And that really comes into play anytime there's an entryway or a foyer. For me, one of the principles of feng shui when it comes to entries is you don't want all your money leaving the house. You don't want the energy to just go straight through the front door. So you always want there to be something that disrupts the flow of energy from where you are inside the house and where you are outside the house. On the opposite side of the space, I wanted to introduce a table where you could have a bowl. For me, the house is set somewhere where there's either oranges or apples or something like fruit trees that you can just constantly go out, pick, bring back in. And as your guests and family arrive, it's easy for them just to grab it and feel at home. I think lighting your entryway is really important too. I want there to be a lot of glowy, happy energy. So I want to add sconces on either side of the door. It's just something that directs your eyes, but it's also very lovely and glowy. I'm going to pick these ones from HWE. They're so beautiful. I love the sort of soft pink glow. It feels sort of like a faded piece of coral or a seashell. Like it's an ocean color that is a beautiful warm tone contrast to all of the aqua in the space. So for the light fixture on the table, I wanted it to be something that felt a little bit more art deco just to juxtapose it off of that antique table so that there was something old next to something new. And just at night when you turn that on, it's going to create this beautiful ambient light that when you're standing coming into the space from the outside in, it's going to create this beautiful soft glow that is just really going to make the space feel like you want to go in there right away and explore. So the chandelier is a beautiful kind of like arts and crafts style chandelier. And I really wanted to highlight the detail that I added in the ceiling. And I feel like this light, because it illuminates upwards, it's a beautiful way to do that subtly. And the materials on it are kind of like an antique brass, but also like a petite greenish tone and all of these things kind of tie into this organic earthy color palette. So for the lighting across I wanted to add in arm sconce that felt a little bit more farm style but they are contemporary they're new so it's a nice balance with the, the other light fixture that feels a little bit more art deco with the sconces they feel a little bit newer and the shape really plays nice with the linear lines of the door. I also offset them from the bench because I think right away you would expect them to be right over the bench with the art piece under, but by offsetting the whole thing, it adds another element of curiosity. The center light fixture. This piece, it's from the Paradise Collection by Lindsay Edelman. I have absolutely love this piece for so long and it actually literally is one of the things that inspired me to think about an underwater mermaid fantasia it's ocean glass done a million different ways across lots of different translucent colors with beautiful chains that could feel almost like moss or algae growing on top of them the draping off of this is what inspired me to think about the resin drips on the wall which i think are really cool so there's just lots of gold dripping draping luxury for the walls, I've decided to do kind of a gallery wall style hanging system. And I want to do a big mirror in the foreground here and then a smaller mirror over here. And then on the opposite sides of the mirrors, I'll hang images of the outdoors. And that way, when you walk in, all of the reflections of all the artwork, as well as the view outside, will kind of make you feel like you're enveloped in an outdoor area. I'm going to put a mirror over the table so that, again, it catches some light and makes the space feel bigger. But there's also something nice that when you're right about to leave the house, it's a final little check of just how you're feeling, how you're looking, and then you can really step out into the world feeling confident. 
Obviously, people love having a mirror by the front door because it lets you kind of like check yourself before you exit and go into the world. But what if you just made that a whole collection? And that allows me to sort of play with a mix of vintage pieces, antique mirrors. So as always, I've added a tree right here and it just, you know, brings the outside in. It cozies up that little tiny room. It's already going to be dead space because we have a bench right here. So by putting this in, it's just a way to give a cozier element and making use of a space that would otherwise be empty. So for the art, right under the sconces, I want to source something that's going to feel like it's playful. So adding a landscape next to a landscape just makes it a little cheeky and fun. And it continues with the theme of bringing the outdoors indoor. This is probably the wildest, most ludicrous space I've ever designed, and I'm really excited about it. But as a bed and breakfast, like as a space where it's about being transported, it's about having a new experience when you're on holiday, I think it would be so much fun. I absolutely love the foyer. I think it's so cool and inviting, and it's all the elements that I love from the character to the old and new and just very durable and approachable. So this room is, it started out quite sad and now it feels kind of stately and warm and sophisticated while still being, you know, you could imagine a family living here and for it to not feel too museum-ish. Wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. These are so different. Love. Wait, this is amazing because yours actually like everyone's where did you even think that this was going to be? Because I envisioned this as like a mermaid like bed and breakfast because oh. I don't know. Yeah. Cuz that that's the first sense. thought they they yeah. came to you. No, but so where are yours? Like what are yours meant to be? Mine was set somewhere in the countryside. Amazing. It could be in Spain, it could be in Mexico. It's I just beautiful. kept thinking somewhere where I could see a lot of Yeah orchards or like yeah, yeah, yeah. some beautiful apple trees and just a vacation home. Amazing. And then what about yours, Mandy? Like where where did you envision this? A cabin in the woods. Nice. Yes. A very chic cabin. Yes. <laughs> yes. Naturally. Yeah, I wanted to bring more wood, more glass. I mean, I think we all kind of felt that way. We yeah. wanted to yeah. like dress up the glass a little bit. Yeah. So I love that we all yeah, and we yeah. all did it differently. And then the paint dripping. The dripping resin thing is something that I do with a decorative artist friend of mine in San Francisco. She's the one who created it. She's such a freaking brilliant artist. But I thought if we did it on a cove ceiling, because we've only ever done it oh. when there was a straight line oh, for yeah. the drips to come down no, from, I love the curve. you could like push the resin wow. up yeah, into yeah. the cove and then cover it all in gold and then you it. know, it just sort of looks like gold, like sweating down a humid <laughs> wall. I don't know. I love it. I love it's gold so sweat. pretty. I know. I want that. What was kind of the vision for your glass? Living in LA, we're so influenced by Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah. yeah. So it's just kind of a nod to that. Amazing. And I just, I like the the lines, the shapes that it creates. And you changed the ceiling, ceiling, which I love. Hundred percent. Yeah. I think we all did that in different ways. Right. Like I raised my ceiling. Mm -hmm. You I opened up. Opened up yeah. yeah, both of you Entry. took the window, like you took like the Claire story way yeah. off yeah. the wall, which is so good. Wait, who makes this bench? I need it. Uh, I just wanted to source some old antique Mexican bench. Amazing. Um, Send me the Again, link. I always try to put like my yeah. heritage and stuff. So <laughs> Naz and I, I was are like, gonna where do I, over where it. Do I find one? So I sent it in and I I found this one that I loved. Amazing. Um, and I again, it. it just had a lot of patina and age to it. So yeah. I wanted you to walk into the space and already feel like it was all cozy and warm yeah. and lived in. It has it that just, feeling. Yeah. It's so cozy. Like, I, I feel like your spaces make me feel like I should like go in and like relax. Yeah. There's great music playing immediately. You. It's an experience. Grab an yeah. apple. <laughs> yeah, that's why I put the apple. apple. No, yeah, I put, that's funny that you pour that a you glass of that wine. I put them there for that same reason. Like I want people to walk in and just grab an apple and yeah. feel like you're at home already. Yeah. And just it uh, is it, that immediately. Super, super great. inviting. And like versus the original render. I mean, all, all of us. Are... <laughs> yeah, we did. I took my shoes off. No, I love oh, that. I love that. I no, so that. I was like, oh, well, this is like a bed and breakfast, so people would theoretically oh, right, just go upstairs. Right. But I was like, yeah, in a resident, I'm a shoes off household. Are you mm -hmm. guys shoes off? I am. Uh, yes oh, and no. Yeah. I'm like, I don't force people to take them off, but yeah. then I, when I do it, um, yeah. but then I'm like, follow my lead, follow my lead. <laughs> <laughs>